Well, there's uh, the how and there's the when. The, the when is about uh, 1996, so I, I always say 15 years. It's much more than 15 years now. How, how it came to me, the, the concept, in fact, the origin of ultraviolet was for me to try to get rid of the constraint of uh, uh, the à la carte restaurant. And uh, in doing so, I try to cook at my best. That was the origin of the project. Okay, I tried to get rid of those uh, integration of mise en place uh, that we do inside of a restaurant where we prepare all the things in the afternoon to be delivered upon the order of the guest. So uh, I saw that the time the best way to do it was to go back to the principle of the table d'hôte, which is the oldest concept. It's the restaurant before the restaurant. That is to say, basically, you decide what the people will eat and you decide at what time the people will eat. This was giving us the control of the time the offer, and thus the consequence is uh, to the concepts that we see today. Uh, in the West, we like them as a dessert style, but here you have this really nice mix with a, a, a salty yeah. and a sweet yogurt. So a nice second course following the pillow. Inside, so you have inside you have the vanilla pastis yogurt, you have uh, Thai fruits, mango, grapefruit, strawberries. Strawberries not really Thai, but we put it in there. Some pineapple. Um, you have a uh, lemongrass, lime leaf, a kefir lime I leaf. I don't know if I really take it from, uh, let's say, a model of another restaurant. Okay. Uh, the, again, because the, the concept itself, the, the core concept of the way to deliver the food at once best, everybody knows it. You take it, I take it, I always take this example on the fact that when my mother is cooking, she don't, she don't expect me to order anything. She don't expect me to come at the table, you know, at the times that I will decide. She decides about the time, she decides what she cooks, and when the dish she cooks is at the peak, She's calling me. She say a table. In French, they say a table. They yell very loud, depending on the size of the house. OK, a table. And then you go and you eat at the time that she decides. So this is, if I was making the reference point, this is the reference point. Okay. Uh, when you design a plate with the intention to impact you know, the, 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 the mind of the people, you have an intention. The same intention that what we have. We just have a little bit more means now than simply a decor that will be fixed all along the meal, right? Uh, the atmosphere will be tailored on the dish, raises them to be at random. When we talk about the sound, in another restaurant, it's impossible to tailor the sound on the dish. Impossible just because you don't have that opportunity to synchronize the things all together, just because also people are taking different dishes. And they are taking different dishes at different times, right? It's, uh, I think it, you need to come, you need to be inside of the room, okay, to understand that uh, at the end of the day, the food is probably the most important of ultraviolet, but the interest of ultraviolet is to be able to enhance the memory of the food. There is two things, right? When we talk in our travel, we always talk about the psycho taste. I made up the word a few years ago, the psychological taste, right? It's a big word out of no word, right? But it's not a new concept at all. The, the psycho test is an everyday thing, okay, that you can try to play on, but anyway, it's there, whatever you do. You go in a, inside of a normal restaurant, the way your booking has been taken, the way you are greeted, your whole humor, the fact that you uh, uh, left your socks inside of the bedroom and got a fight with your wife, all those things, yeah, they, they are playing on the way you will taste the carpaccio inside of the restaurant. All of them. One of the easiest things to, uh, to grasp when we talk about the psycho taste is the fact that everybody, including animals, including my dog, I take my dog, but it's available for everybody else. Okay? I like the idea of the salivation. You know, when people see or smell something that they like, by anticipation, they taste the dish. And 
the physiological manifestation of this anticipation is the saliva. You know? So I love this. And so everybody tastes with his mind. That's not a new concept at all. Now, how can you trigger this anticipation to the advantage of the, of the, of the dish? That's what we try to do in, inside of ultraviolet. Uh, before the people start to get in, right, we start to get completely set for the start of the meal. Okay, so all the tableware now is all set. Okay, and we're going to rotate okay, our final preparation. Now this is what's yellow. The final preparation will be start to happen. And they build it now. The eggs will be the seventh dish of the evening. They build it now. The veal is the main course. When the guests are on the way, when we get the phone call that the guests are on the way, the veal goes in the oven. So this is going to cook here for about 90 minutes. But that's all set and that's through the rehearsals that we found that out. So that's just going to be ready when the guests come back from the main course, which is quite amazing when you think about that timing, actually, that we've come to, you're talking before this dish, at least 10 dishes before. So we have found a timing from the guests leave the meeting so they get in here, so they eat the first 10 dishes, and then they get here, they get still just finished. It's quite, like, how do you control the way people eat, how do you control their timing? They are very influenced by the tempo of the music, by the tempo that we serve, and it's not that we force the food on them when we take it away, but it's just that the sizes that they are in, and the music, and the scenario, which is actually influencing how fast or slow you eat. Which is quite interesting psychologically when you think about it. It's not obvious. <laughs> so the collagen in between the, the, the sinew is what gets um, denaturated with the, with the long cooking. And it's that exactly at that temperature, you get a nice touch. Pick up the rocks. Right? Rather than when we are in another restaurant, the only thing again where I can play will be the way, for instance, I, de I designed the, the plate. Designing taste. That's, that's the idea. So here we, we can really play on everything else surrounding us. And even if it's, even if we have an image around us right now, but even if it's a, a static image, even if it's a caricatural image, even something that is very graphic, okay, you cannot escape to the impressions that I tried to give when you eat the dish. When, when we have, for instance, around us we have kind of a, a, a rain, it's a gray rain. When we hear the sound, I'm talking now, so we did not put the sound, but when we hear the sound of the rain, that's the most powerful one. The sound is actually far more powerful, more invisible, but much more powerful than the image that we have around us. You know, and when you hear the rain, you, you got that impression of wetness, right? And that's what I want to give in that case, right? But it's true that as simple as this, in ultraviolet, we have the opportunity to send you a real sea around you with the sound of the sea and the smell of the sea. So as, as this simple says that everybody knows, right, that a fish will taste better if it serves on the shore, in a port, in, in a place where you can see the sea, you can breathe the atmosphere of the sea. So that's a basic. Even if it's done better inside of uh, Paris, in the city, in the, inside of a, a fine what whatsoever. And it's uh, as fresh, to be honest with you. So that's not the point. It's the impression that we have. So here we are stimulating this impression. We are somewhere starting up the imagination of the people. We are not cutting the people from their own imagination. Because whatever image we're going to send around them, everybody will still do his own Pass. Everybody, I, I say this because I see that a lot of guests are very different in ultraviolet. And some people are far more touched by a dish, okay, uh, because of the surrounding of the dish.
Oh, you're ready for the cheese and salad course, and we need to remove the picnic. So to remove the picnic, we plant a little bit of coffee chapel to distract them, and at the same time, we're going to remove the grass and everything else from the table. So we should shuffle those three very good uh, Charlie Chaplin clips. Listen very carefully, guys, otherwise it's not going to work. It's a, there is an advantage in ultraviolet. It's a very set menu. We know exactly what to do, at what time to do, and we are extremely trained. It's always the same team. So if you come on the menus that the guys have done already hundreds of times, okay, I, I can afford to be detached. Okay? I will be around okay, in the kitchen or doing the composition of the new course. Okay? Generally, Greg will be around checking uh, that the dishes are going out you know, to perfection. But to be honest with you, the whole team can send the dish just by themselves, okay? You just need to be sure that you don't let the things go, right? But at this level today, everybody here in the kitchen is trained, is uh, trained on multi-dishes, okay? And as ultraviolet is really about timing, the most important thing that we don't always talk about is the timing of the dish, right? We know a dish is at three minutes, it will be served after three minutes, we'll serve the second dish. This one is at five minutes, this one is at 10 minutes. So we have the perfect control of the offer and the time. So for us, it has to be peaceful. You see also when we visit the kitchen, when, when, when we have some image of the kitchen, you will see that the kitchen is kept clear every time, as much as possible, you know? When the people get in, the kitchen is nearly clean. It's because it's very important in such a precision work, to keep the things very smooth and to keep the tempo, to be sure that everybody's starting the dish at the right time. So it's very important that there is absolutely no stress in the kitchen. On, on most menus, yes. I do a little homage to my father. Uh, I'm Catalan, all my father is Catalan from part of France. And there's only one thing that the Catalan passes through. It's not allowed so much in the kitchen, but uh, they do grill. Right? Every time there's a grill, an outdoor grill, say the grill and we always do it with vineyard wood. So my father would do the step grill on vineyard wood, right? the, the wood from the, from the vineyard, which is the, the smell is fantastic. Right? And the, the whole region is a region of wine. It used to be a very poor region of wine, now the wines are getting better and better. So we serve it with a, with a wine from my region as well. It's a very simple thing, but I like that dish because it's a dry dish. You can judge, you've been there. Ultraviolet, the execution of the project, okay, is in par with what I had in mind. So somewhere when I did Ultraviolet, I realized my dream. This was the, the, the project of my life, okay? But the project would have been meaningless is if what we serve, the context of what we have around us, okay, was not serving the purpose I had in mind. Today, it's, it's close enough, believe me, it's always better in your dream, no doubt. But I was, the first meal we did, I was very happy. Probably the best professional day of my life, for sure. So interesting to see, and we're gonna walk you through that too. It's a choreography also from the kitchen standpoint of view, not only from the service point of view. Uh, from the service point of view, there's a way that we enter the room, the way we leave the room, the way we serve. But even from the kitchen, everything has been timed out. A lot of it took minutes and seconds. So you will watch uh, the way that it flows. It's, it's very beautiful, the service. They, they know where they're supposed to be on what sound or where they are in the menu. And everything just kind of flows. By the end of the night, you're going to see this whole kitchen. It's just absolutely clean. And it's going to look like nothing even happened. The memory of the dish in ultraviolet will always be stronger than in any other restaurants that I've had before. And the dish is the same. So for, for me, this is the justification of, of the project. It's just with the same course, what we put around this is not whistles and bells. It's not, uh, how do you say, it's not a dinner show at all, right? It is just a better color to remember the dish, okay, than a color in a restaurant or an atmosphere, I say a color, it's an atmosphere, that has nothing to do with that dish. 
That, that's, that's where I, I like the concept of ultraviolet, and that's what's difficult for me to explain until you come here. I, I think most of the people who come here will realize that it's really about food, and that the surrounding is very interesting, but it's not the show, it's not the point. The point is that it strengthens your focus on the dish, and don't disturb you from the dish. Anything else that uh, we need to explain about dishes?